Climate change is here. Severe storms are happening more and more often, and for safety's sake, companies are going to have to adapt. Our trainings actually rolled out right on the heels of Hurricane Harvey, where we saw chemical plant explosions that happened due to the lack of electricity, the lack of being able to keep chemicals refrigerated anymore. People realized that climate change uh, can cause industrial accidents. Toxic use reduction is going to be one of the key components of overall community preparation to deal with climate change, to help make your community more resilient. If we can get rid of a lot of the, the toxic materials we use, then they're not a vulnerability anymore because they're not on site. Any material that is toxic that you need to use, really it makes sense to do a thorough review and really determine whether that's necessary, is it necessary, and the amount that you're using it, um, and does it have to be on site until you're actually ready to use it. We are the boots on the ground that go into the industries, look at um, what's going on there, and offer a second set of eyes so that we can make recommendations on how to improve workplace safety, prevent environmental exposures, and prevent industrial accidents. Think back to Thanksgiving 2006 when Danvers had an explosion that leveled an entire neighborhood. These type of explosions can happen when the power goes out due to severe weather. A lot of communities have emergency plans, but they're basically names and things on paper, and they don't necessarily have to do with relationships. You know, understanding who the people are in the community, having their contact information, and having a personal relationship with them long before there's an emergency. Many people develop tunnel vision when it comes to emergency planning. This is our plant, this room is our plant, and they focus on what are the hazards in here? What are the hazards to, to myself? What are the hazards to my coworker? But they fail to consider what are the risks to the responders or our neighbors? OTA has a live online interactive map that is available both for municipalities and companies to identify their vulnerabilities. So you can go to this map and it has data layers showing where flood zones are, where hurricane zones are, but also things where tier two facilities are, which are chemical users, uh, where underground storage tanks may be, 21E, which are hazardous sites, um, and, and railways, because there are a lot of chemicals that move in transit. The map is an amazing resource. It's a great way to see what's around you, so not only your facility, but maybe there's another hazard, you know, pretty close to you. The location of our particular plant happens to seem to be in a climatically relatively safe location. I mean, there may be somebody else uh, four miles from us that's a bigger hazard to us than we are to ourselves. Even though we're tiny, we deal with all the same regulations everybody else does. And it's nice to be able to have access to some of these resources that we otherwise would not have had access to. What we try to do is incorporate OTA's lessons from the workshop and some of their suggested practices when we go in and offer the municipal vulnerability program in urban areas. Because a lot of times you find the industries, as much as they're trying to think ahead with climate change and preparedness, a lot of it usually has to do with transportation routing. But the deeper lessons that we, we discussed in the OTA workshops, these fit in very well with the municipal vulnerability preparedness, as a lot of times these industrial areas are the backbones of their communities. You can contact OTA for free training, technical assistance, confidential site visits, maps, and other resources to help you prepare for climate change and prevent industrial accidents in your community.